Today, we're gathering around the campfire with Corinne, a QHS admin whose life is as exciting and grounding as a hike through the mountains. But what trails did she tread to reach these heights? Let's trek into the wilderness and discover the adventures that led Corinne to where she is today. Blessings. My name is Corinne, and I'm an admin for Quantum Healing Systems. Since I can remember, I experienced multiple challenges with my autoimmune system, nutritional absorption, body structural difficulties, like my left kneecap shifts to the left and the right kneecap shifts to the right. Moving further each way, they are bone on bone at this point. I was told by an orthopedic surgeon that I need both knees replaced. I had a lower back fusion, metal plate, and two metal rods on my L4, L5, 6, and S1 area. I was diagnosed with TMJ at 21. I had rotary cuff surgery and both biceps fused. I experienced fibromyalgia, Lyme disease, hepatitis, H. pylori, leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, and neurology. I journey with pain on a daily basis. My inner knowing is that all of the discorded dis-ease was either from past lives, other timelines, vaccinations, and sports injuries, mostly gymnastics. Although I continue to do all these things that I enjoy, movement appears to be very limiting because of the feeling of pain. Through it all, I do carry on. Thanks to quantum healing systems, I hold that inner knowing that my husband and I will be able to have children, travel, mountain bike, hike, work out at the gym. We love cardio and weights, stretch and cook. One of my ultimate creativities, pain free. I know that there are much more that I want to experience. Like having children, assisting myself, my husband, humanity, and animal realm. I envision myself with renewed vigor, energy, joy, peace, and harmony. A newfound excitement for guiding the next generation of starseeds, children, healthy and pain-free into our Star Trek future. This is why I am here at Quantum Healing Systems. So what's my backstory? What is my other timeline is what I call it. So I'm in the middle of eight children. The fourth child, one died and was stillborn. Five girls and three boys. I grew up with fun and laughter and cohesiveness. We grew up with lots of play, noise, and really protection from my parents. My mom and dad were the best. They really were a wonderful role model of love. My dad's multidimensional, I call it, or multi-generational history is Russian, Italian, Polish, and Turkish. And my mom's cultural history is Russian and Middle Eastern Israeli. My parents were so intelligent and kind and enlightening. I call them in their light, in their glorious light. I grew up in the middle 60s. Well, actually the beginning of the 60s, <laughs> but the mid 60s. We moved to Italy when I was about three years old and there were incredible times in Northern Italy. My dad made captain at the time in the Air Force. He was a hospital administrator and just left Vietnam. I was stationed in Aviano Air Force Base in Northern Italy. So it's the base of the Dolomiti Mountains. Um, my mother had her hands full. She is a full-time mom and wife, and she's incredible and so full of heart. My mom and dad love their family and all beings. They're amazing role models, as I said before, truly. 
We grew up outside the Air Force Base in a small town called San Giovanni Porcinigo. It was um, uh, Norte di Venezia, so north of Venice. And wow, we had a fantastic landlord, Maria and Aldo. And they were so kind and loving to us. They were like a second mom and dad. They loved children. Uh, dad extended his tour of duty uh, in the Air Force in Aviano. We lived my developing years there. Uh, we traveled all through Europe every summer as an entire family and grew up and our family was growing up and our family was like a comedy skip most of the times. So my parents were originally from New York. They were second generation Americans. Um, they spoke like Edith and Archie Bunker. So if any of you remember the old series, All in the Family, uh, my dad's name was Seymour and my mom's name was Paula. And they loved and endured each other and were married 30 years. All of us kids were so close and loving. We always played outside with each other and the Italian farm children around us, all around us. Language was never a barrier. And eventually, um, us American children learned to speak Italiano <laughs> real fast. Dad and mom were open hearted, so they reached as much they researched and read as much of all four beings. They were so, so enlightened and so hungry for the divine truth and knowledge. They read about all four beings, Illuminati information, a real his, her story, always searching for the truth in every subject you can imagine. They were historians and researchers in their heart. Um, they taught me information beyond what our school systems taught me. My journey will forever continue in raising my knowledge and consciousness. I certainly have my parents' passion for research and knowledge and appreciation for what they've taught me. We later left Italy and moved to New York, Northern Michigan, and then Arizona, Williams Air Force Base, and then my father retired as a major in the United States. Air Force. He made Lieutenant Colonel, um, but chose to not take the VLC position because we'd have to move to Turkey. And at that time, my brother and I were uh, at ASU. <laughs> I went from school to school with dad's position in the military, and I learned at an early age that you either sink or swim. I guess, in other words, um, make new friends or be flexible, adapt, basically, when change occurred. So I'm very open to change. <laughs> I was shy, but learned to overcome my shyness rather quickly. Um, being the middle child of a large family, I took on the role of peacemaker and the balancer of all the kids. <laughs> I don't know if that's what a, a middle child does, but I certainly did that. Um, before we went to Italy, the Air Force made sure that the entire family received all shots. TB, hepatitis, tuberculosis, smallpox, measles, rubella, etc. I was only four years old at the time, so my parents thought that they were doing the right thing. Interesting though, that when I feel back into this, when children cry, given all these jabs, they know instinctively that vaccines were harmful to all life beings. Um, that's my opinion. And in my opinion, looking back, this is precisely when I start getting sick. And in fact, all the kids in our home started getting sick with smallpox, red throat, etc. My mom even tested positive for TB. Hmm, I wonder why. I would come home from first grade with migraine headaches. The doctor um, basically uh, didn't comprehend what was going on. Um, they scanned for brain swelling, etc., because this would become some of the norm rather than a periodic event. The doctors on base could not find anything, so I just learned to live with it. I went from school to school in my later years in New York, 
Michigan, and then Arizona. Dad was stationed many different Air Force bases before he retired again at Williams Air Force Base in Arizona. Uh, but how my mother and father handle moving, settle, setting us up in new schools every summer and still being the most loving educational parents is beyond my scope of reasoning. They were simply the best. My high school years and college years were fun and full of cheerleading and gymnastics. That was my love. I injured my spine, my muscles, uh, bones, my overall body structure countless times. I mean, you name it. <laughs> Yet I would recuperate and participate over and over. It was what I did and what I loved, you know? In fact, my own family was very athletic, including my father. In my beginning second year as a sophomore at ASU, my mother was tragically killed by a drunk driver in a car accident. My father almost died, but held on for the kids. That was devastating for myself and the entire family. It I took on the role of being mom and raised my little brother who was only seven years old until my dad was able to recover, rehabilitate, and assist. Dad, we married, and we were all happy that he moved on for us kids. Later in my early 20s, I met the most incredible man, the love of my life, Don, working at the semiconductor plant at Motorola Mesa, Arizona. We dated eight years before we married. <laughs> Donnie is always and will be my best friend. <laughs> we never had children. We raised three boxers and a liver Dalmatian. <laughs> they were our babies with fur. My stepmom passed of cancer and my father transitioned about a year later. That was an anguish for me. My dad was my best friend but in a daddy way. Um, dad was my mentor, my professor, my spiritual leader. He truly saw more. His name was Seymour. Our babies would her transition within weeks of dad's passing, so this was quite traumatizing. I had been diagnosed with TMJ for the before this, uh, when I was 21 and I had orthoscopic rotary cuff surgery in my 50s, my bicep tendon, both of them right and left were torn and fused my L4 and 5 and S1. I have back fusions. I've got a metal plate, and two metal rods in my back when I was in my 50s. and. I have been diagnosed and told that both kneecaps float currently. Both knees need to be replaced, is what I'm told by orthopedic surgeon, but this I refuse to today. So I felt compelled to seek a clearing of all dark energies, recollecting the light energies as well as working out at the gym, eat as clean with veggies, fruit, fish as possible. Uh, with supplements and continuing a holistic path of health. Donnie and I, to this day, we still have a most amazing, loving life. I'm very grateful for that. I found through my own research over the years a means of learning so much about energy, holistic healing, Tesla technology, the world we live in, how to navigate from the heart, and how to assist myself and others, and through it all, I found myself experiencing the world of quantum healing systems. There I knew that I was home, <laughs> helping myself, my fantastic husband, and all the loving beings. Through my path of seeking, I have to say thanks to my amazing parents and husband, I found my highest excitement and joy quantum healing systems, divine scripture, Cynthia, Dr. A, Tracy, and all of the beautiful beings in this group. 
For me, my quantum healing journey through my experience in wearing the Q-Twine wave and becoming involved with the programs that were created in all the loving heartfelt souls that offer so much for humanity, for quality of life, body, mind, and spirit to all, has been a source of comfort in alleviating and connecting to such light beings, but it has been a source quantum healing systems of comfort in alleviating my physical pain, experiencing clear cognition, and connecting to such light beings that are considered my soul brothers and sisters. This has allowed me to grasp life fully with joy, excitement, harmony, and love, to take the baton and pass it on in a heartfelt commitment <clears throat> and an inner knowing to do what I can for all beings on this realm. After all, I'm a di divine creator <laughs> of sorts. I'm looking forward toward all corrections and to be able to even have children. <laughs> wow, wouldn't that be a gift from God from source? <laughs> I know that the future is incredibly bright there are no limitations and I'm looking forward for creating my healthy healing future for myself and all of humanity. Thanks to QHS and looking forward to our future. Join us on the prequel where every story matters and every voice is heard because here at QHS, we're all about healing, learning, and growing together.